of the stories making headlines on Capital TV. Speaker of the National Assembly, Justin Materi, has barred MPs from traveling outside of the country until next Thursday to ensure the Constitution implementation bills are approved. Matiri made the communication during this afternoon's sitting where he said the move is meant to ensure MPs attend House sittings and participate in parliamentary debates on the nine bills currently before the House. Parliamentary protocol requires that MPs get clearance from the Speaker before traveling abroad. Matiri on Wednesday was forced to postpone debate on a special motion seeking the House approval to extend the period to enact the constitutional bill to next August after it was established that the required 233 MPs threshold to vote on the matter was not realized. Apostle James Nganga will spend another night behind bars after the Office of Public Prosecutions opposed his release on bail. The prosecution argued that he and his three co-accused are already facing charges for conspiring to defeat justice and have therefore proven likely to subvert justice by tampering with witnesses if released. Nganga has pleaded not true to the charge of causing death by dangerous driving, leading to the death of Mersin Jerry in Limuru on July 26th. He has also denied conspiring to defeat justice and failing to report the accident. The International Criminal Court has admitted into evidence the prior recorded statements of five hostile prosecution witnesses in the case against Deputy President William Ruto and journalist Joshua Arpsang. The trial chamber by majority found that the amendment to Rule 68 of the court's rules and procedures on which the ICC prosecutor for Tubensuda based her application could be applied in the Ruto and Song case. Ruto and Song's defense had argued that the amendment to rule allowing for prior recorded statements to be admitted into evidence shouldn't apply in the Ruto and Song case as it is a passage by the Assembly of State Parties to the Rome Statute in November of 2013 was impinged on it not being applied retrospectively. But the chamber found that it was a matter of interpretation and that by allowing this argument they would be hindered in carrying out of the function. In April, Bensuda applied to have the prior recorded statements of six of her witnesses admitted into evidence after one disappeared and five others recanted on the stand. And in other news, 800 teachers will be hired by the Teacher Service Commission to fill the gap left by those who fled the northeastern Kenyan region for fear of a terrorist attack. The matter was decided at a meeting chaired by the Deputy President and that included the Teacher Service Commission, the Ministry of Education and Northeastern leaders. Elected leaders in Northeastern have threatened to hire teachers for themselves after the public school teachers posted to the region demanded transfers. This followed the killing of their colleagues in a bus by Al-Shabaab militants in November last year. The Ministry of Education will work with the boards of management of both primary and secondary schools to employ untrained teachers that will be, um, that will take charge together with the teacher service commission staff that um, exist at the moment in those areas. Uh, and that is going to happen between now and the first of, uh, first of September so that we can have teachers in class beginning next time. And now taking a look at the world of business, the construction of the Hoima Lakichara Lamu crude oil pipeline is a regional priority, President Uhuru Kenyatta has said. The president said the pipeline project would open up northern Kenya and accelerate the region's development. The head of state was speaking at State House Nairobi where he hosted a Japanese business delegation. When you look at Kenya, I would encourage you not just to look at Kenya within the boundaries of our country, but to look at Kenya within the boundaries of the East, Central, you know, uh, East and Central and the Horn of Africa. This is an entry point into that much bigger and wider market. This is the way I would encourage you, I would encourage you to, 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 to think. HF Group has launched a new brand and logo for the group and its subsidiaries. HF received approval from the Central Bank of Kenya to establish a non-operating holding company, HF Group Limited. The company also created a new subsidiary, HFC Limited, which is licensed to carry on the business of a mortgage finance as well as banking services under the Banking Act. HF Group has rebranded the Kenya Building Society, a fully owned subsidiary and real estate development arm of the group, to HF Development and Investment. 
HF Group Managing Director Frank Ireri said it was important to create a fresh brand identity that reflects its dynamic offerings in the financial services industry. The rebranding is the culmination of the strategic work we've been working on. For the last six to nine months we've been working on our Vision 2020. HF now has come of 50 years of age and it was time now for us to really relook at what we want to try and achieve over the next 50 years. And finally, taking a look at the world of sports, world record holder David Rudisha has singled out Botswana's Nigel Amos as the man to beat in the men's 800 meter in Beijing. I know coming here, you know, I'm not the favorite, of course. Amos Nigel is the favorite, you know, and uh, that also is good for my pressure because it's keep off a bit of pressure on me. So I'm looking forward and uh, we have been doing quite good training for the last uh, few months. Uh, we have been trying to improve on our speed, which we actually lack. But I know myself and I know I have very good speed. The world champion from 2011 will team up with Bahamas World Relay silver winner Ferguson Rotich, who beat him at the Kenyan Trials, and former World Junior winner Alfred Kepkater when he heats the start. And that's a wrap up of the day's top stories. I've been your host, Angela Wamboy. For more on these and other stories, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel on Capital FM Kenya.